child, we only 60 seconds in, and all I can think is, what in a knockoff Disney Channel original movie is going on here? Dan it, 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 Dan it. I like that. It's going to be my Dan new theme song. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Batman. <laughs> now, since the beginning of time, it feels like studios have deemed if a film does well in the box office or if it gains a certain level of popularity, then there should be a sequel, trilogy, or just continue them until the end of time. I'm not going to name any names, but I'm sure you can think of some. Mean Girls was such a cultural phenomenon that there had been talks of a sequel with the original cast for many years. Unfortunately, that never came to pass. However, comma mean girls 2 did indeed happen and we got the movie that literally nobody asked for i kind of wish that i didn't let the best of my curiosity get to me because well i regret it let me set the scene we start off with joe a high schooler with the same i'm the new girl in town i moved a lot when i was younger and i'm such an outcast story that we heard before. It worked in the real Mean Girls, yes I said real, because Katie experienced a totally different culture. She grew up in Africa for Christ's sakes, but for some reason they expect us to go, aww I hope this girl fits in at her new school because her dad's a mechanic and she knows about cars. Okay. Then we're introduced to our token Mean Girls the plastics. Mandy, aka knockoff Regina George, which I'm sorry, but they could have at least tried to make her fashionable because this is giving kindergarten garage sale. Chastity, aka fake Karen, and Hope, aka fake Gretchen. And I have to say, it's pretty amazing to set out to make unlikable characters, but the only reason they're unlikable is because the writing and acting is just that bad. Then there's Abby, aka wannabe Janice Ian, except way less cool. Someone bumps into her and she drops her sketchbook in the garbage, then a teacher carrying frappuccinos out of nowhere spills them on her, literally ducking and running from the plastics, just overkill on the she's a square tropes. The only actor that ties the original movie to this one is Tim Meadows, who plays Mr. Duvall. And I'm convinced he must have just taken his job for a check, nothing to do with falling in love with the script, just extra money to take his family on a trip or something because yeah. Then comes the lunchroom scene with the high school click speech, the groping by the football player, the food eating contest. I don't know about you guys but I've never seen or experienced this behavior in high school so I don't understand why this keeps happening. And don't get me started on the dialogue. Fake Regina says she's only dating her boyfriend because he's going to UCLA and it was an excuse for her to spend a week in LA, get discovered as a swimsuit model and become a reality star. Ah yes, every girl's dream. And how the heck does this girl have a dog in the school? Are we all just supposed to ignore that? Like it's normal? Oh, uh, okay. So then there's the forced rivalry between fake Regina George and wannabe Janice. This would work if Mandy was actually less fortunate than Abby, but it's like, girl, you're rich. Get over yourself. The kicker is the rivalry goes into overdrive when Abby gets a better parking space than Mandy? Who wrote this? So Mandy humiliates Abby and when Joe doesn't find it funny, fake Aaron Samuels here says, most girls just laugh, text back, or post a status. I'm sorry, what? What are we talking about here? Like what is happening <laughs> right now? But let's keep going. So at the beginning of the movie, I had no idea who this guy was. All I knew was that he gave me creepy vibes and acted as if he may star in the movie with a higher MPAA rating, much higher. So it did not surprise me that he offered money in exchange for her services. As he so eloquently put it, if I can't buy my daughter's happiness, then what is it worth? I'm gonna ask again, who wrote this? You know what, I'm about to look it up because I can't. Oh. God, no, it has the nerve to have three writers. Three people thought this was a good idea. Wow. Wow. But let's keep going. So she accepts his offer, which they already set it up that her dad has spent all of her tuition money. So I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. My first laugh finally came when Mr. Duval was recording an announcement for the students and the secretary kept walking across the camera. This was 23 minutes into the film. Let's keep going. Now, how does she go from thinking fake Aaron is a total sexist douchebag to being absolutely smitten by him? And nothing took place for her to say, you know what? He's not who I thought he was. He's actually a really nice guy. The math ain't mathin'. 
so Katie with the K goes out on a date that we don't even get to see with this guy. Fake Regina records audio of them talking about the fact that she's never had a boyfriend before, never had a kiss, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? We don't care. We don't care because not only did this liking come out of nowhere, we don't care about her or what she's going through. And what's with this slideshow? Where did these pictures even come from if the aluminums just found out about this surprise courtship? Child. So the next part really just made me hit the pause button, get food, and spend my day doing something else. Like, literally. We find out why fake Regina is so upset and obsessed with K. Katie and fake Aaron. And if you're like me, you were probably thinking, oh, this must be an ex-boyfriend that she never completely got over. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. The writer said, we're gonna knock them off their feet with this. They won't see it coming. The reason why she's doing all of this is because he's her stepbrother. What the fetch is this? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not going to do all this for a stepbrother. Even Katie with the K was like, I thought they were hooking up and everybody's like, oh gosh, no. What do you mean? As if she just pulled that assumption out of the thin air. I don't believe that they're just step siblings. This has cruel intentions written all over it. But I'm just gonna leave that there. Honestly, at this point, I'm ready for lame Janice to find out about Kay Katie being paid to be her friend so I can go to bed. Unfortunately, I still have an hour to go. Crap. So what follows is what I like to call Home Alone meets Regrets, a series of pranks that the Tupperware crew unleashes to try to sabotage Kay Katie and her boyfriend, I guess he is. You know what, I cannot continue this video without saying this. I was going to wait until the end, but I, I can't take it anymore. How do you take a perfectly good movie, iconic, timeless, classic, do a sequel that's not really a sequel, you just used it for name recognition, take everything from that movie that people love so much and make it the dullest, corniest, unmeaningful, forgettable movie you can think of. Defamation of fictional works. What? Okay, I just made that term up, but this would definitely hold up in the court of law. This is unethical. No, it's not. Oh God, I still have 52 minutes to go. <sighs> Let's keep going. So, the straw that breaks the camel's back is when Team Styrofoam decided to put sugar in Kay Katie's dad's engine. She sets out to set them straight. And how does she do this? She enlisted her rent a friend to throw a party the same night as Virginia. You know, since they have that big rivalry going on. Now, naturally, Virginia just gets jealous and goes into her home alone force, Kevin McAllister bag, and poisons their pizza upon arrival. Captain K saves the day before it reaches the guests. Chinese food magically arrives. Katie feeds Virginia's boyfriend a slice and he upchucks all on her gown. Now Captain K really thinks she's the queen bee. She makes it her mission to keep this going. She calls her crew the anti-plastics and then goes, yeah, the name is not very original, but it's fitting. And I'm just thinking after all this time, this is the only thing that's not very original to you, seriously? But anyways, Team Recycle Bin goes on sabotaging so that they can reign supreme. We get the you're not the girl I thought you were speech from fake Aaron and she's like, oh my God, who have I become? Fast forward and we get to the ill-fated turning point of this movie. And that's when Virginia just so happens to be taking a jog at the exact moment that Special K tells lame Janice's dad that she can't go on being horrible and she wants to return her rent-a-friend allowance for good. There's a whole expose written the next day during first period on the scandal and everybody is fake mad that she could do such a thing. You guys treated wannabe Janice like an outcast, what, three days ago? but now all of a sudden Katie with the K is the bad guy like cut the crap but just when I thought the movie couldn't get any cornier after Virginia tries to frame K Katie Katie decides they need to settle their dispute by playing none other than football I can't I can't I don't know if the objective is to stick with the I'm not like other girls narrative or they just couldn't think of anything else but this was not the move so of course we have this montage of them getting ready for the big game we get this interesting dance in the field and it's finally revealed through uh Mr. Cyber division over here that the money stealing was all set up. Oh, but of course they couldn't finish it without one last twist. Somehow the hacker and lame Janice win king and queen at the dance, even though there was zero context for that. They say what happened to all the characters in the following weeks, but I ain't talking about that because 
I don't care. You know, I really wish I could blame one of you for requesting me to do this video, but it was my own undoing and that's something I have to live with for the rest of my life. I purposely didn't touch on everything because this video would be at least an hour long. So tell me what did you guys think of the film? What scene stood out to you? Was there any moments that made you say, okay, I'm not, I can't, I can't do this. Cause as you can see, I had a few moments like that. Let me know down below. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, YouTube will never show you my videos. As always, I'm all ears. Until next time, bye.